Hi, I'm Gary from LawNarration.com. If you're not familiar with LawNarration.com or me, uh, I've been aerating lawns for over 20 years. I've aerated tens of thousands of lawns and I've operated almost every aerator uh, that's been manufactured. I have a pretty in-depth knowledge of all sorts of aeration equipment. And uh, today we're gonna take a look at a new piece of equipment. So right here behind me is the new Stinger Quad Air 3000. It's a riding aerator, uh, very similar to like one of the Xmark units or one of the Ryan's or the Turfco machine. Um, so the, uh, ultimately the operation and the layout of the machines are all very similar. Um, each unit has its own little um, nuances. So today uh, we're gonna take a close look at it. The Stinger guys have been nice enough to loan this to me for a couple weeks. These machines are uh, still in a prototype uh, right now. So they're expected to be in production, I think next year, 2019. Last year, the Stinger guys came out with uh, the, um, the Quad Air 4000, which is a bit larger unit. I had a chance to uh, ride it before it went into full production and uh, they're on the market now. Uh, this unit is a lot more similar uh, in size proportions to something like the X Mark, which is right now probably the most popular riding aerator on the market. Um, you know, you can see some of my other videos about the X Mark and the um, uh, Ryan riding unit, the Z Plugger, uh, some different aerators that I've uh, done videos on. But today we're just going to take a quick look around this. I just got it back to my shop here about 30 minutes ago. So uh, we're going to walk around it. We're just going to do some quick comparisons uh, of what's different and what's similar from the Quad Air Stinger to the, uh, say, Toro uh, X Mark machines. So let's take a look. Let's start with the operator's panel. Uh, you'll see a lot of similarities. If you're familiar with running an aerator, you'll find that you have a foot pedal switch and you know the framework on the on these are almost identical i mean there's very few changes the platform's the same the foot pedal switch is the same the strap down points here are virtually identical the fenders are real similar uh, so you'll find a lot of similarities of the two machines um, the control panel is real similar. oops control panel is real similar uh, you have your time pressure adjustment that shows your pressure you have your time control switch uh, we'll explain that in a minute, but of course you have your choke and your throttle uh, and your key start. Uh, over here on the X Mark Toro units, time pressure adjustment, time control switch, pressure, parking brake, and you know, saying your uh, throttle and choke. So anyway, um, on this one, you'll notice the, you know, the it's controlled with the cable, so you have to pull this up, slide it forward. To get it actually work, that's your brake. Uh, the brake on X Mark unit works by um, there's a brake built into the hydro units on the bottom. Uh, however, on the Stinger unit, you'll find that the brake is not on the control panel. Uh, the brake is actually here off to the side, and it's a pretty simple setup. Just put it down, and your brake is off, or pull it up, and it actuates the brake. And it's pretty simple. It just has a tire stop, so that's pretty easy. Uh, not too much can go wrong on that. Uh, let's look at the rest of the kind of early uh, changes that you can see right away is that um, the tires on the back of the Stinger are larger. They're 18 inch tires. On the X Mark, they're a little smaller. They're 16 inch tires. Uh, this will probably help you rolling over some obstacles. We'll see when we go to demo it. Um, the front. Caster wheels, uh, I haven't looked down that closely to see if they're same size, but what I did notice is that the stance of the machine is wider in the front. So the areas between here and here is about four inches or five inches wider, I think, than what you'll find over on the uh, X Mark unit. It's a lot narrower up there. So I'm assuming that's going to help us on some side camber, uh, side slope, uh, and hills. Uh, I think it'll be a little bit more stable, but we'll find that out. Um, the motor they have on it is Kawasaki 651. And on this one, we got a 541. 
And, you know, we have older Exmark machines that actually have smaller engines. So, you know, this one's kind of in the middle. Older Exmark have smaller engines. This one steps it up even more. And they got a bigger engine. You know, if you've ever seen the Ryan units, they actually use a liquid-cooled. Uh, or no, they don't use a liquid-cooled Kawasaki. Take that back. What they have is on the top. Um, that's a cooler for the hydros, I think. Uh, but you can see that. They also run a Kawasaki. Um, as far as overall size, they're pretty similar in size. Uh, the width of the back tires um, from outside of the tire to outside of the tire is just under 48 inches. Uh, same thing with the Xmark machine. So basically your width on the trailer is going to be the same. Um, and your, you know, your aeration width, your tine width, um, is the same. So you actually have 30 inches of operation on both units. Um, they're both 30 inch aerators. Now, what I've mentioned to you there before is this. Um, they made another unit last year that was a Quad Air 4000 and it's in production now. But this 3000, um, it is a prototype. Uh, so these are not in production yet. I think they're going to try to get them out in 2019. Um, as of right now, there's only, I think he told me, three or maybe four of these in existence. Um, you know, one of them to go to the trade shows that looks pretty, and the other two or three of them are, you know, for demos and R&D, that sort of thing. So they gave one to me to run it for a couple weeks and see what I think about it, uh, maybe give them some feedback or something. So we're going to make a couple videos. Um, now we'll get down to the nitty-gritty. Uh, as you see, the... Xmarks, Toros, uh, Ryans, they're all set up with a uh, one complete unit hydro transmission. So hydrostatic transmission made by Hydro Gear, and you'll see it down there. Basically, the Hydro Gear transmission has a shaft that comes out to the sprocket. The sprockets have chain drive that go back to the tires. And then, you know, this one right here goes back to the rear wheel, and then the inside ones. They go back to the tines to drive the tines. So when you come to look at, and you know, they're slightly different between the Turfco, the Ryan, the Xmark. They're slightly different, but in essence, they're the same on how the drive mechanisms are. Um, you'll find that, you know, you look over here and there's some pillow block bearings. They all have grease fittings. So you have to do regular maintenance on these things. The chains need lubed like about every, uh, I lube these things once or twice a week. Um, there's six chains on the unit. Anyway, um, the chains, you know, drive the tines. Now the center tines here, uh, hopefully you can see it. The center tines, they spin freely and that allows for turning. Um, the outside tines, they do the actual action that drives the machine along with the tires. Um, that gives you good traction, gives you good penetration. Every time you push that button down, the whole tine carriage lowers into the ground and then comes back up when you release the button. Um, now, in this situation, this switch has an override. You can see it says no, a big, big do not circle. So if you have this switch down, uh, what it does is it does not let this foot pedal button here work. So you push it, nothing will happen. You come up here, turn it on like that, and then you're ready to aerate. Down, times go in, up, times come out. So, uh, let's look over here at, you know, this is how the Toros, X Marks, Turfco units, uh, Ryan units, they're all pretty much done the same way, same transmission. You know, the time switch or it might be a little different, but it's pretty much the same. Over here uh, with the Stinger units, well, first of all, we look under it. Look, it's clean. There's not hardly anything there except you see some tines. You're like, what's going on? Well, this one, it's set up differently. It has two, one, two, it has two hydro pumps and wheel motors. Um, so this is set up like a lot of the uh, commercial riding mowers used to be, and some of them still are, where they have two separate hydro pumps and separate wheel motors. Where this one, the hydrostatic transmission is all built into one single unit. There is no wheel motor. There's just the chain that drives the wheel, and there's a sprocket back there. And so in here, um, you know, these hydraulic lines go back, and they come back into the tine area. And the first thing you'll notice in this tine area is, wait a second, this definitely looks different. There's no chains. 
And that's the beauty of this machine, and you know that's really the essence of uh, the originality of this new design that that Stinger guys are working with. Is they don't have any chains, you know. There's no greasable bearings back here to mess with. Um, you know, in there you can see the wheel motor, just like a riding mower might have, or something like that. So there's separate wheel motor that drives it. So there's no chain, no uh, anything back there. Um, the center units like this are split between the two and they operate independently just like on the X mark and the outside ones are driven but you say hmm how are these things driven because there's no chains well if you look way back in there I don't know if you can see too well but there's another hydraulic line and it goes into the bottom of there. So I, you know, I've just had this thing in the shop here for a little while. So I'm not going to tear this machine apart. It's a prototype. I don't have any schematics or anything. But I can tell you, the inside of there, there's another hydro motor of some sort. Uh, so basically, it's like a wheel motor, except it's probably, it's inside of this uh, tube. Uh, so I don't know there must be there's also has to be large bearings in there I'm sure to admit, for this to ride on uh, but what you'll find is that you know that's the main difference so it stays clean you're not gonna get stuff caught in your chains you're not gonna have to grease the chains you're gonna have to oil you know grease the bearings oil the chains adjust the chains you know Ryan for instance tried to do some alleviate some maintenance so what they did with theirs is you know they put sealed bearings so that you didn't have all these grease fittings like you do over on this machine grease fittings and grease fittings what they did is they put sealed bearings in here so no greasing which not is nice for short-term maintenance the problem is sealed bearings will get dirt in them and wear out these guys as long as you keep greasing them like you're supposed to they'll last a long 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 time um you know on these you know any way you look at it the chains they're going to need they're going to stretch you know your sprockets are going to wear all that stuff is going to eventually be um, a part that needs to be repaired or replaced over here uh, you're not having that issue because there are no chains there are no bearings sealed or unsealed there's probably there's got to be some bearings inside of there that's for sure so i don't really know that till i do a little more research um, how that's going to play out and what it looks like uh, you know we can look to see how this thing comes apart also to see if it's going to be easy to disassemble but you know, the purpose of this video is just to look at the bare essentials here and see the differences um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take this out we're going to run the crap out of it and see how it performs if it's faster if it's slower how it plugs and what happens we're going to shoot some other videos about how all that happens um, so that's the uh, premise with these new Stinger machines, um, you know, and we're going to play that, you know, on, for instance, one little other thing I didn't mention is this, this whole floating platform that you stand on, it's fixed on an Xmark. On Orion, you can fold it up. Uh, on this, you can also fold it up. So, you know, you just pull this pin out like so, and this whole platform will fold up. Um, for use practicality, it's not a big deal. For trailering, sometimes it did help. Uh, we had some Ryan machines also. Uh, and, you know, for trailering, sometimes, you know, that, that foot or foot and a half that you get by folding it up is helpful. So, hopefully explaining all this has helped out, um, you know, give you a quick first look at it. Um, you know, the intention of this machine is to be rugged. You can see it's welded. It's pretty solid, heavy duty. Uh, you'll notice this whole thing is built out of like, I don't know, that looks like it's pretty close to quarter inch. Um, so it looks pretty heavy duty. The whole premise of the machine is uh, this, this unit is hydraulically driven, where this one is hydraulic in essence, but really it's all chain drive. So there's two belts and six chains. Over on this one, there's only two belts, no chains. You know, you have two hydro pumps. Four, we'll call them uh, hydro motors and then of course you have a auxiliary hydro pump right here and that's the one that actually operates your piston right here 
to make your tines go up and down out of the ground. Now I did notice on the Stinger, the piston is a lot smaller in diameter than what it is on the Xmark. You know, that one looks a lot more substantial. How that plays out or what purpose or if it has makes any difference, I don't really know right now. Uh, but, you know, after we run this thing, we're going to figure it out. Um, I'm going to do a couple videos while I'm running it, and we're going to look at that. And then after I'm done with kind of my test ride, I'm going to do a final video that kind of summarizes uh, after I've run it what I like, what I don't like. And then, and then we might also look at some of the things like maintenance-related stuff, you know, how to get it apart, how, how easy is this thing to work on. Do you have to do any maintenance on it? Because... You know, I, I, I mean, I'm talking other than the engine maintenance, of course, because I'm looking around. Now, there's a grease fitting right there. Um, you know, of course, these these will need, need to be lubricated at some point. You know, it's going to have to have a grease fitting in here on the side or something like that. You know, on, on these units, they come with a plug because you don't grease them that frequently. It's like once a year, so you screw a grease fitting in there and you grease it. But, you know, you're going to have to do something like that to grease the, uh, the front caster wheels, of course. Um, but other than that, it looks like there's very little areas of maintenance over here to deal with, other than regular fluid changes and stuff like that. Uh, so, hopefully this has helped. Hey, if you want to learn more about aerators, you want to see new stuff, you want to see how you aerate, uh, operate these machines, um, then, you know, subscribe to my videos for sure. And uh, lawneration.com is uh, one of our websites, and we do a lot of lawn aeration, so um, keep up with us. Hopefully that's helped give you a new look. It's kind of a sneak peek since these things aren't even out yet. Um, and uh, we'll let you know, and then you can make your decisions on, you know, what kind of units you're ready to buy. Thanks for watching. See you, boss.